Hello to all physics enthusiasts and fans of physical experiments. This is Andrei Shetnikov, and today we will talk about the physics related to measuring blood pressure. About what the upper and lower readings of a blood pressure monitor mean, and how we measure blood pressure inside a person by placing a cuff on the outside of the arm. Well, of course, each of you has had your blood pressure measured many times. Look, I have a blood pressure monitor ready. I press the button and the pump starts inflating the cuff with air. The pressure in the cuff increases and the arm definitely feels it. And now it reaches 176 millimeters of mercury. Now the air begins to release from the cuff. All of this happens very gradually. Uh, let's wait a little longer. And here are the readings from the blood pressure monitor. 100 kong, 41 over uh, 79 millimeters of mercury. What do these two measurements mean? First of all, it's important to understand that the heart is a pump that circulates blood through the systemic and pulmonary circuits. And since blood vessels have some resistance to the flow of blood, additional pressure needs to be created for the blood to pass through these vessels, which is what the heart does. And it does this through pulsations. Accordingly, there is a maximum pressure that the heart creates when it contracts. And this pressure is called systolic. And pressure remains in the system even when the heart is relaxed. And this pressure is called diastolic. These are the two pressures that they we measure, but we measure it, of course, not at the heart's exit, but here um, on the uh, arteries running along the arm. And such pressure is called arterial pressure. But it differs in significantly from the pressure created directly at the heart's exit, because the resistance of the arteries, oh, which are quite wide, is low. Why do we measure blood pressure in millimeters of mercury? The fact is that in the past, doctors used oh, mercury manometers to measure it. And for us, as physicists, it is natural to convert millimeters of mercury into millimeters of water column by multiplying our readings by the density of mercury, 13.6. So my 140 pesaise millimeters of mercury in systole convert into 190 centimeters, almost two meters of water column. This is the height to which the heart acting as a pump, could raise water. And since the density of blood is practically the same as that of water, blood could also be pumped to such a height. But in the case of a giraffe's head, it uh, is three meters above its heart. So the heart has to work harder and create more pressure. But if we switch back to millimeters of mercury, the giraffe's blood pressure is 250 over 160. It is a very strong and extremely hypertensive condition. How does a manometer and a cuff which is placed on the arm externally measure the tree, uh, pressure inside the artery? Well, it's actually quite simple. When the device inflates air to a pressure higher than the systolic pressure, the arm is completely compressed and blood cannot pass through the artery to the arm. And this means that here, under the cuff, it does not pulse. And then the microphone, which is placed inside, hears everything through this tube. And at this moment, it does not hear any pulsations at all. Then the pressure in the cuff gradually decreases. And when it falls to the systolic pressure slightly below, the blood begins to pass during pulsations. Accordingly, there are such beats that are transmitted through the air in the tube to the manometer. Well, then the manometer hears these beats. And when the pressure drops to the diastolic level and even lower, the blood flows freely under the cuff and no pulsations are heard at all. And in this way, these two, uh, Boundaries are determined, the upper and the lower. 
and how the pressure was measured using a mercury manometer, you can see in this experiment. However, here I have a water manometer, not a mercury one. I press on oh, the cuff. The water column rises, and now the pressure inside the cuff is 400 millimeters of water column. And if a soft hose were passing under the cuff, then to push the liquid through this hose, it would also be necessary to create an excess pressure of the same 400 millimeters of water column, or even slightly more. And now it's clear why. When measuring pressure, it's important to keep the cuff on the bicep at heart level, whether sitting or lying down. Because if I move the cuff here to the arm and lower the arm down, the readings on the manometer will be higher by the hydrostatic pressure from the heart level to the cuff level. And when I took such a measurement, I got a pressure of 160E over 120. And if I, on the contrary, raise my arm up and measure the pressure in that position, then I will need to subtract the hydrostatic pressure from the heart level to the arm level. And in that position, I got 130 over 70. I also tried um, to attach the cuff to my calf and measure my pressure that way. But in a sitting position, this pressure turned out to be so high that the device maxed out and displayed the letter E. Error. And now it's time for our final question. And this time it will be, we have already determined that blood pressure in systole, if converted, from millimeters of mercury to centimeters, or say meters of water, is about two meters of water column. Now imagine a diver who has dived deeper than two meters underwater. Well, then it turns out that the water around him is like a large cuff that compresses him from all sides with a pressure greater than blood pressure. And it seems that his blood circulation should stop altogether. But it doesn't stop. How can this paradox be explained? Write your thoughts on this matter in the comments to this video on YouTube.